What's up, golf addicts? David Barnett here. I got Pat Perry with me. This is DraftKings. Hi. Hi. This is Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by DraftKings. It is very dark. We have just finished recording our own podcast, um, talking about the Rocket Mortgage Classic, Patrick, and it was a good one. We had a lot of discussion. We had a – actually – we just weren't really on a lot of the same guys this week. We, it was kind we of weird. We weren't on the same page. We weren't reading the same book this week. Uh, we were not. Or we, we were, were just off on chapters. Which is weird, uh, too, now that I think about it, because I'm drinking wine tonight, and normally I'm drinking liquor. And mm-hmm. you, what do you have? You have your rosé tonight, your typical rosé? Well, now I've switched to some a little bit of uh, the, the pink stuff. Okay. Uh, for but you were show, drinking I- some liquor. I was drinking some liquor, some liquor earlier on the show, but I've now changed to the rosé, just for just for our yeah. friends at Draft. I mean, because it's kind of my thing for for that dark show. I mean, at the end of our podcast tonight, you read rap lyrics, and it's really hard to read G's and Hustlers while holding a glass of pink uh, rosé. You know what I mean? What that's, I really should have been drinking. Look. What I really should have been drinking during the show because it's based off of the some gin and juice. I should have had some gin and juice. You should have. But you didn't tell me what song I was going to be no, singing I that you. I was going to be that I was going to be dealing with some Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Because because then I would have had some gin and juice. Hey, you know what though? Uh, cheers to you, my friend, because just last week on this very same video we tipped Dustin Johnson at twenty eight to one. Now listen. DJ's DJ like we're not it's not crazy that you know we would tip DJ but we felt like he was coming around 28 to 1 was a big number for Dustin he didn't get that number often and it cashed so um there you go let's get into it Pat we got the Rocket Mortgage Classic from Detroit Golf Club in Detroit Michigan this is only the second time that uh, this PGA Tour event has been hosted here at Detroit Golf Club so tell the fine viewers here at TJ After Dark um, after they hit the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up, why don't you tell them, you know, what they can expect with this golf course, some key stats you're looking at, and uh, then we'll talk about some players we disagreed on, the, the couple that we may have disagreed on, and then we're going to go through some DraftKings Sportsbook plays that we like. Yeah, so this is the second year we have played at this event, so we don't have a lot of course history. We've only played here two years at Detroit Golf Club, but as a par 72, it is measuring ju- just over 7,300 yards. We got 156 players, so a full field event, top 65, and ties will make the cut. This is a classic Donald Ross design course, so tree lined off the fairways, very undulating, slopey greens that tend to tend to slope from front to back and then have a lot of runoff areas. Um, so I think for me, it's just one of those courses where you got to get around as, as a smart player. There's a lot of, you know, you got to shape your shots a lot off the tee. You've got to hit these greens um, from the right angles. Now, here's one of the things we've heard about a lot this week. Last year, this course played as one of the easiest courses on tour. As a matter of fact, five under made the cut, which is the first time that five under has made the cut since 2016. And 25 under was the total for the winner, which was Nate Lashley last year. So birdies were scored in bunches last year. I think you're going to get that again uh, for this year's version. They have – there's some rumor that they're going to grow up the rough and whatever else. That may be true, but I still think they're going to. These players are going to score a lot this week. But I do think you can place a little bit of emphasis on driving accuracy and keeping it out of the rough for the main purpose of hitting these greens in the proper spots because you've got to be below the hole. Nate Lashley talked about this last year when he got hot and won this tournament. He said a lot of his birdie looks or from beneath the hole, which is what you see a lot with a Donald Ross design. If you get above the hole, you're going to have a heavy breaking putt that's quick and whatever else on these Poana greens. You never know what can happen. But if you're below the hole, you've got a much better chance to score. And, again, I think scoring is going to be at a premium this week. So I'm looking at birdie or better percentage. I'm looking at strokes gain approach. I mentioned that as well. And I think now, you know, now that we've got, you know, we're week four into this restart of the tour – Definitely can look at form. You, you can, I mean, form is, is, is 
big of a factor this week as it has been so far. So I think that's important. Now, a little bit weaker field this week than we've had uh, since the restart, and I'm not surprised. Some guys are going to take a break, but we do have uh, some of the top players this week. So it's going to be a fun, a fun week, a good tournament. I think it's a good course, and I'm excited to see uh, what these guys can do and to talk a little bit of disagreement or agreement, maybe, that you and I had on the show. Uh, so there you go. That's that's my rundown, DB. Yeah, um, yeah. you mentioned, man, it's a birdie fest. Nate Lashley Monday qualified to make it into this tournament last year, got hot and won at 25 under. People, that is a lot under, okay? Now, you mentioned it was the first time five under made the cut. That is not true. It's the first time five under was the cut line. Pat is, is after dark and the rosé is kicking. So five under. No, wait, I does, thought I said five under. The it's cut. the first time since 2016 that five under was the cut line. That's what yeah, I said. You, I, I believe. Did I not no, say that? That's what I meant kept to say. You just kept saying it's the first time five under made the cut. No, That's, I meant to say since 2016 <laughs> that, that five under was the lowest. Yeah, so yeah. Whatever. Okay. I just wanted to clear it up for the people. Um, yeah, this is going to be a birdie fest, like you mentioned. So you got to be able to score. Now, this is one thing we talk about a lot over at Tour Junkies, is when you have a course where birdies and eagles are a plenty, anyone out of this 154 player man field can win this golf tournament, just about. Okay, anybody who's well, who's played well enough, whose career has brought them to this point, can get hot for four days and run away with a golf tournament, like Nate Lashley did last year. The harder the course, the more difficult the course, the more you tend to see the cream rise to the top, all right? It doesn't mean that the cream won't rise to the top this week. It just means that it ten- the birdie fest tends to bring things to a little more of an even playing field. You get somebody with a hot putter like Nate Lashley last year, that's what happens. So uh, that is something you want to keep in mind. I mean, Nate Lashley won at 250 to 1 last year at this event this is why i love golf this is why i love betting on golf if you're new to this if you if you're only watching this because you're just waiting for the nba or major league baseball or nfl to kick back up let me tell you this is why betting on golf is so much fun and can be very profitable because it is such a variable game and you have 250 to 1 winners it doesn't happen often but you have plenty of triple digit winners 100 125 yeah. 150 to 1 happens all the time so, uh, it, it, you know, that's, that's what we're going to get. Now, you mentioned not as sexy of a field as we've been used to seeing since the restart. Um, so this is cool. This is going to be a fun event. I agree with you, man. I think, I think stroke scan approach, iron play is key. And you mentioned hitting fairways because if you don't know, if you don't play golf, when your ball is in the fairway, it is a lot easier to control your distance into greens. That's a lot easier. Now, you would know more about being in the fairways – than I would. Um, I tend to be in a little more rough than you do, but uh, I hear from what I hear, it's easier to control. It is. Distance. It is. Yes. Yeah. The short and, grass helps. Yeah. And with all the undulation, you know, of these Donald Ross greens, you got to be on the proper tiers and you got to try to give yourself, as you mentioned, those uphill putts. So there you go. That's what we're looking at. Uh, now, now you did say one thing and I want to bring up the first player here that we have a little, we have a somewhat of a disagreement on. You said, this is a thinking man's kind of smart person's golf course, you know, like somebody who can really think their way around here, mm. you know, work the ball mm. both ways. I know someone where we're who, going here. Someone, someone who, uh, you know, may, may, may enjoy the challenge of a brand new golf course that they haven't seen. And that really a whole lot of people haven't seen other than the one year they played it. Someone that may enjoy a Donald Ross design with a lot of slopiness and thinking about, Hey, should I just fly it back to the hole and stop it right there? Should I, should I hit it over here and let the slope carry it? Someone like that, you might say, would be a, a, an ideal player that you uh, were not necessarily feeling, and that is Mr. Bryson DeChambeau, who I am going to totally consume all the chalk because I think he's going to be very popular. Uh, I am willing to consume the Bryson chalk. You are not. Is that, is that simply because it's just gotten – the, the projection is too high for you, which, I mean, I would say comfortably Bryson is going to be somewhere in the 30% range for tournaments across the board on DraftKings. Well, officially my fade was not uh, in, know, on the show, was not yeah. Bryson DeChambeau, um, who I think is by far the best player in this field this week. Um, let's just mm. look at some stats here. He was second in Mexico. He was fourth 
at the Arnold Palmer. He was third when we started back at the Schwab at Colonial. Eighth at Heritage and T6 at the Travelers. So if you're counting, that is five straight top 10 finishes. Now, so I do think for a guy good. Yeah, for a guy priced at 11.7, he is finally getting priced where he probably should be. Well, Rory's above, not here. Yeah, Rory's not here and whatever else. But in order to, to get value out of him, you definitely got to have a top 10 at least, okay? I feel like if you can fade him this week and just for some reason, for some reason, he has a bad week, you're going to gain a lot on the field if you don't play him. And you got to choose if you're going to play him or not. And I think if you're going to play Bryson, you play a ton of them. But I think if you don't play him, don't play any of them. And then you just go from there. And I just feel like this is the week to do that. I mean, I, and I agree that, like, he is – he's a thinking man. This is, like, a perfect type, kind of course for him. But I, I, it's a gamble for me. And I feel like this is the week you gamble against him. And, 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 look, we talk about how variable this game is. You even mentioned it with Nate Lashley yeah. winning and guys that are 250 to 1 and 300 to 1 and stuff like that. So, if you can think that way, you know, for guys like that, then think the same way for guys that are favorites like Bryson DeChambeau and say, you know what, I'm going to take a gamble and say that DeChambeau is going to have a bad week for once, even though it's, like, been forever. And I'm going to fade him, and I'm going to gain a ton of leverage on the field. And I just feel like that's the best play for me this week. Now, am I going to hate you for playing Bryson DeChambeau? No. Because I just I, – I, I'm like – as much as I can't stand him from a personality standpoint, he's done everything that is right for his game coming out of the break and everything like that. But for me, I just feel like the – I don't know if I want to say the smartest play, but the best gamble is to fade him this week. And there's a difference to me between being smart and gambling because, some, you know, sometimes you're just going for a little bit of luck. And so I think you're, you're, you're trying for a little bit of luck here and he has a bad week and you end up lapping the field because he's going to be 40 or 50 percent on He's not going to be 40 or 50%. He's going to be like 30. He is. I think he is in some of your like higher dollar single entries. I, I, I bet you he is. He could get to 40. I, I, I'd be shocked if he gets over 40. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably – I do think if you're going to play him, you go ahead and go over low, like you said. And I plan on doing that. I'm going to have him in like 75% of my lineups. Um, but uh, you're right. Like, you didn't vehemently disagree with me on the podcast about Bryson, but I think he's an interesting name at the top that people want to know. Do I do – I, do I do that or not? Do I fade him or not? And, and listen, the decision is you do what you think you can. I think both decisions you can make valid points for. I mean, he continues to top 10. He's young. He's fit. He is hungry as he can be to go ahead and get that dub. Uh, and, and now he looks at a field that looks like freaking just, just, just a little snack compared to the last three fields that we've seen since the restart that have been so much stronger. And this is just a little snack, man. It's like a little Slim Jim. And he's just going to eat up the Slim Jim. A little Slim Jim. And, but he's been having to fight off the likes of Rory and DJ. And, what you know, I mean, like, it's been, a, it's been big boy field since, we, since the restart. This is the first one that really isn't that great. And, and I'm just not fully ready, even with the 11-7 price tag, to hop off the Bryson wagon, the, 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 the Bryson meat wagon. You know what I mean? I'm all, I'm all aboard that. The, the Bryson meat wagon, dog. He's, he is cruising right now. I mean, the thing is, we just haven't seen him really, like, put everything it, – it's amazing how well his finishes are, and he I hasn't know. put everything together. Like, that's yeah. where you could get screwed if you so do it face feels him. Like his, it feels like his floor that's – that's what I'm saying. Like, it feels like his floor is like a T-15. Which, if he finished T-15, like, you could definitely make an argument. Okay, if he finishes T-15 – and he's, you know, 30% owned, you didn't have to play him. But he ain't killing you either. Like, he's not killing no, you. And he's, he's probably scoring you, a lot yeah. of DraftKings points. This is the first tournament since the restart we get four par fives. And we know what, what Bryson wants to do on par five. Now, he's one of them is like 600. Them all. There, there's one of them he's not going to One of them he's not going to. But, but he's going to have a better chance than anybody know. else. Been, yeah, that's true. Changed. I mean, I don't know. So, he's going to feast on the par fives. I, I'm just saying, like, you're right. He hasn't. Like, his approach uh, – or his wedge play has not been fantastic. I've watched him. 
And you're like, dude, if this guy starts hitting his wedges a little closer, y'all all better like run for the hills because this joker is coming. So if it well, clicks, that's the thing, and I, I don't want to get off before it clicks. That's the thing, and I can't believe we're spending this much time on Bryson because you and I are both not fans of him. I can't stand him personally. But, I freaking hate him. But here's the thing. Him. I think he's also getting himself in positions off the tee that he's not normally in because he's hitting it so far. So he's trying – he hadn't figured that out yet. Like, he's hitting it so far that he's like, oh, crap. I play, Like, last time I played this course, I was 140 yards out, where now I'm 100 yards out with a wedge. Like, I don't know. Like, he gets a little off when it comes to that. So, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But, but anyway. All right. All right. So, the other guy I wanted to talk about, like, I, I was surprised. Like, I didn't know you were going to bring up Bryson right off the bat. But this guy, you probably didn't know I was going to bring up. And it's it was a cash play in in our show and that's adam hadwin and i don't know about hadwin at 8200 i i don't mind the price but he hasn't really i mean he's like finished 40 at the last two weeks so he hasn't been great i know he's like kind of a good you know he's a good poa putter i believe yeah Um, best surface but as solid as you think he is like i need to be sold on adam hadwin this week because He's the kind of guy that I feel like on Friday, I'm going to want to pull my hair out and delete the DraftKings app and do all that thing. Like, well, like do all, like what happens when we cut, we sweat, cut a guy, you know, cut sweat a guy. What the f- I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, I think you're mistaking him for a couple people priced around him being Lucas Glover and uh, Rafa Cabrera Bello, but. I love Glover, by the way, this week. But listen, anyway, I think I, I, this is this is a this seem seemingly even after one year. But when you just look at Donald Ross designs in general, this is a a t- stereotypical hit some fairways, hit some greens, make some putts on some undulating, tricky greens. That is Adam Hadwin for his career. Okay, like c- career, he's he's done that. His best putting surface over his career is POA, which we have this week. If you look over the last 24 rounds, he is sixth in the field in fairways and driving accuracy. Um, he's, his iron play is always extremely solid. Greens and regulation, extremely solid. What has he done since the break or since the restart? He's finished. He's 11th in this field in fairways and accuracy just since the break. He's third in greens and regulation just since the break. Um, you know, I mean, I just think Hadwin. I think Hadwin's got a ton of. Uh, I think he's got winning upside. I mean, he's a he's a he's a solid player. Yeah. Um, he's a but solid you're player. That, you're that solid about him that you'll play him in cash. Yeah, because because in cash you're looking for a cut maker, and I actually think for I actually think his price is another big selling feature. I mean, you look at eighty two hundred for Adam Hadwin, who's a established PGA Tour player, very consistent. You don't see a whole lot of ebbs and flows with Hadwin. You just don't. He's a consistent cut maker. I mean, I, I would take him nine times out of ten to, to make the cut over Rafa, over Glover, over Jason Day right now. Um, you know, I mean, I just feel like in that range, he's actually a pretty good value. Okay. This is a great I mean, course he, for him. It is. I, and you may have sold me a little bit. And I, I have to, I'm using this opportunity, by the way, to also bring up right above him at 8,300, Christian yeah. Bazudenhout. Bazudenhout. Is a, uh, Baz, Bazudenhout, Bazudenhout is, a great tur- is a great tournament play. And uh, I don't know, we don't have to get into him too much, but I think he's a great tournament play, and I like him right there. Well, so if you, if you like this a show is, pivot. This show is not about agreement, Pat, and we both did agree on old Cebes. We both like Cebes, yeah. who is – what I said is European tour Adam Hadwin. He's accurate. He's understated. He's not going to blow you away with distance, but he hits a lot of fairways. He hits a lot of greens in regulation. He's a very good putter. And that's Adam Hadwin. I don't know what you're – it's Adam Hadwin $100 more expensive. That's all okay. it is. All right. So, all right. I, now, I do think Cebes will be lower owned in terms of tournaments. I do, I do believe that. But that's why I went with Hadwin in cash. I don't care about the ownership in cash. I just uh, want okay. I want the guy who has the best chance of making the cut in cash. That's what I want. I I want that everywhere, but 
um, obviously it's essential to get five of six or six of six through in cash. Yeah, which so. was very difficult last week. Very Only difficult to do last week. Two to three percent, I believe, in the Millie Maker, which is yeah. unreal. Let's get into some sports book plays, Patrick. Uh, I've got some outrights. I've got uh, a couple of top ten bets I'm looking at, and a couple of head to heads. Uh, I will tell you that to kick off the outright card. I'm looking at Kevin Na at 40 to one. He is a proven PGA Tour, mm-hmm. multiple PGA Tour winner. He is either hot or cold. He is rarely lukewarm. He played well last week. Very accurate player. When the putter's on, he is hot. I like him at 40 to one. He was at 50 to one earlier this afternoon. He's been bet down, or DK has figured out something. So um, he's he's going that direction. I'd like to grab him at 40 to one before he drops even more. But I like the winning upside for Kevin Na. Now, listen, Kevin Na is probably either going to top five it and you'll have a sweat, or he's going to trunk slam on Friday and he'll be home and you'll be commenting in the YouTube page here what bunch of tools we are. That's just what he does. That, but that's I, he wins though. He wins every now and then. He wins. So I like I like Na, and you mentioned him. I had him written down. Adam Hadwin, fifty-five to one for all the reasons I, I just talked about. I like that. I like HV3, Harold Varner the third at 70 to 1, who's playing very well right now, making a lot of cuts, came really close to winning the first event back from the restart at the Charles Schwab, just faded a little bit on the weekend. Ton of upside, ton of scoring. He's knocking on the door. Love 70 to 1. And finally, Brendan Todd at 90 to 1, who we saw lose to Dustin Johnson, basically because of one bad hole. If he wouldn't have had the one bad hole, DJ surely tried to cough it up at the end there. He would have been right in it. He when he tend when he's hot, he's hot. You know, he won back to back tour events in the fall. This is a three time PJ Tour winner who's obviously in good form and the course fits him. That's like a that's the trifecta. He's a winner three times on the tour in a weak field, weaker. Incredible form good form coming off of last week, finishing runner up. And he's a course fit. This is not a course that is a little bit out of his league. And he's ninety to one. Give me all that Brendan Todd. Uh, and then I'm going to go two guys that are both 20 to one to finish top 10 on DK Sportsbook, and that is Cameron Tringali and Wesley Bryan. Both pretty accurate players. Wesley playing pretty well right now after uh, the restart, coming off of an injury um, over the last year or so. Uh, 20 to one, I, I like that number. I don't, I don't really bet like 12 to one guys. I don't do that. I like the big, the big balls betting. You know what I mean? So I'll go 20 to 1 for a T10 for Wesley Bryan and Cam Tringali. I'll hold off on the matchups. Let's let's hear what you have to say about outrights and anything else. Yeah, okay. So here we go. I am um by the way, I like the Wesley Bryan 20 to 1. I, I think that's a good bet there. It's a top 10, I believe, right? Top 10. Yep. So yep. I do like that. He's been playing good. I, he has shocked me, by the way, coming off the injury and everything else. He's played re- really well. So. Yeah, yes. I'm a big fan of that. I'm, uh, you know, I mentioned on our show, I'm back on Scotty Scheffler, and I like him at 40 to 1. And so, as far as one of the shorter odds guys mm. out there, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Scheffler at, at 40 to 1. I think he should just mm, own his par fives. And he really, like, last week on the par fives, I don't understand. Like, maybe he just didn't feel comfortable on them. I don't know. But this this week, he should just, like you said with Bryson DeChambeau, feast on these par fives. So I like Scotty Scheffler at forty to one. I like Alexander Norin at eighty to one. He's been a guy that I've been on all year and just has been extremely solid. I think he's going to mm. win at some point. I like Maverick McNeely at ninety to one. Another guy who's been like not only a cut maker, but I think he's a guy that can score and do well. You know, I, I think um, going a little longer here. Chris Kirk at one hundred twenty-five to one. We saw him just win a Web.com of or damn it, I always missed the Corn, Corn Fairy, Fairy last whatever. week. Or two, just, no, just two a couple weeks ago, he's at yeah. 125 to one. A guy that also can score, and I think has his, he's back just in good form and everything. So I like him. Tyler Duncan at 150 to one, I think is a good play as well. Yeah, look at you going long shots here tonight. And bud. then another really long shot, a guy that played really well last year with the T6 or last year, sorry, last week with the T6, Patton Kazire. He is at wow. two hundred to one this week, but two-time like, PGA Tour winner. He's one on the tour. I think this is a good course fit for him, 
And also, if you want to just bet him top 10, he's 16 to 1. But he's at 200. I mean, you might as well. If you're going to bet him, just go 200 yeah, just to 1. Just go, go there. I don't um, like the 16 to 1 number, actually. Yeah, so there you go. Um, those are my outrights. So you you hit the matchups there. Um, by the way, I don't really have any matchups. So. Okay, I have a couple juicy you... matchups to throw out. Uh, we talked about my boy Cbez. I like Cbez over Kisner. Um, I like Nate Lashley, defending champion at plus money over Harry Higgs. Higgs not playing great. I like Higgs a lot. I think he's going to have a tremendous career. But lately, it's not great. And then Lashley. He's coming back where there's a little magic, and he's a plus number. I like that. I like Bubba at a plus number over Fee now. I think when you look at what they're both doing well and not so well, Bubba's a little more consistent right now with the irons than Fee now is. I don't like where irons, uh, where Fee now's irons are at the moment. I was paying a lot of attention last week because I had him, and he missed a cut. Uh, but Bubba at plus 110 over Fee now is interesting. And then Sa- Rory Sabatini at plus 100 over JT Poston is also interesting. I love the postman. Oh, Big fan, and and I, and this course should fit him to a T. He played, you know, b- but he's not been playing well. The irons have been very off, very, very off, and I don't like that for JT since the restart. Uh, now, maybe he finds something between now and then, but Sabatini's, uh, you know, a, a good player, you know, with the irons as well and already kind of playing a little better since the restart than JT. So, I'll take the plus money on all those matchups. I I like going to plus dollars, baby. I'm not trying to give you a bunch of minus 130s up in here. That like is Tour Junkies After Dark for the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Thanks for sticking it out with us this week. We'll be back next week. May your screens be green. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a subscribe. And, uh, yeah, have a great week. See you. Out. Oh!